A lot of my friends are successful entrepreneurs. They've done well, they've sold their companies, and they like to joke with one another and with me and say, you know, getting to your first million dollars is the hardest part. And you know there's a lot of truth to that, right? Saving a million dollars is really, really hard. I think the hardest thing to do, though, is to save your first hundred thousand dollars. And most of the viewers of my channel are a little bit older, we skew a little bit older, and most of us have accomplished that hundred thousand so dollars. So today's videos about talking about getting to your first million dollars saved and some ideas to help get you there if you haven't made it yet. But you know, a lot of the principles that I share here also apply to your first hundred thousand dollars. And I, I want to start off with a statistic. And that is that the average savings rate in the United States is 4.5%. And I want to put that in perspective because, you know, the average salary in the United States is $50,000 a year. So if you're making $50,000 a year and you save, let's say 5%, at 5% after 40 years in, in um, future dollars, you're going to have $650,000. But in today's dollars, you know, what, what would that feel like in today's dollars? It's really $250,000. And that's after 40 years of work. So, you know, you don't want to put in 40 years and find out you've got the equivalent of $250,000 to retire on. That's going to be really tight. So today we're going to talk about what you can do. And, you know, the first thing, let's go for a walk. The first thing that you can do uh, is try to increase that savings rate. And in the second half of this video, I'm gonna talk about some tools that you, you can use to increase your savings rate. But first, I wanna show you why it's so important and getting there, uh, increasing your savings rate as soon as you can is super important, right? I, I opened the, the video talking about in just, you know, the first million's the hardest to get to, no kidding. Uh, a lot of us would like to get to a million dollars. Um, and then I said, you know, the first hundred thousand uh, is hard. And let's just talk about this. If you save a thousand dollars a month and you're fortunate and, and during your lifetime, you get an 8% return, which I, I think is realistic uh, to do the stock market, depending on which study you look at, uh, delivers eight to 10% a year. But if you save a thousand dollars a month, it's going to take you six and a half years to save a hundred thousand dollars. It's going to take another four years though to save two hundred thousand dollars because you've got that first hundred thousand dollars working for you. But let's just stick with it. Uh, with this, it's going to take eighteen years uh, at a thousand dollars a month to get to a half of a million dollars. And, but within 40 years, let's say you started saving when you were 25. Uh, so within 40 years, you're gonna have $4 million. So you can see how things really ramp up dramatically. In fact, if you can hang on an extra 10 years, let's say you started saving uh, when you were 20. Uh, so let's say you've got another 10 years in you. I don't advise doing that, but for the sake of illustration, remember after 40 years, um, your your thousand dollars a month had racked up to four million dollars, but in ten more years it's going to go from four million dollars to ten million dollars. So you can just see how it's exponential, and that's that is the power of compounding. You've heard me talk about Warren Buffett before. Uh, I'm 59 years old. When Warren Buffett was my age, he was worth a cool two billion dollars, which is nice. Um, but fast forward today to 92, really with the same assets, which is Berkshire Hathaway stock, his $2 billion has grown to almost $110 billion, right? That's a lot of money and really shows you the power of compounding. So getting to the point where you can start saving more is super important, right? So I said in the second half of the video, I was gonna talk about how do you save that? What are some ideas to be able to successfully save more money. And I'm gonna jump into that, but before I get there, I have a favor to ask. If you enjoy my videos, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up on this video. It really does help the YouTube algorithm find other people. Um, and if you enjoy, uh, if you're a regular watcher, thinking, think about subscribing. I'd love to have you as part of the community. And then finally, uh, do me a favor and leave a comment. 
Uh, I love reading everybody's comments. I, I try to reply to at least a couple dozen a day. So anyways, let's get into the second half of the video, which talks about how to actually increase your, your savings, right? I mean, it's one thing to say, oh, gee, you know, the sooner you can do this, the better. Execution is the hard part. So, you know, really we have two big levers to do that, right? We either spend less or we make more. And, you know, the spending less can be a little bit painful, but you know, the nice thing about spending less is it's under our control, right? Uh, we're making more, you know, ultimately that, that comes down to maybe being willing to switch jobs or more importantly, putting in the time and the effort to level up your skill set, to learn new skills, to hone your existing skills um, so that you can add more value either, either to your existing company or maybe to a different company in the future. So we're gonna start off talking about spending less. Um, and really there, and I know I'm preaching to the choir here, uh, it's really about understanding the differences between needs and wants. You know, so many people spend money on, on things that they, they think they need, uh, but is, you know, your 12th pair of blue jeans really a need or is, is that a want, right? So understanding that, I think a little bit of minimalism goes a long way. Uh, the older I get, the more I become a minimalist. I, I don't like having a lot of stuff. I don't want my stuff to own me. I, I value my freedom and my flexibility and my mobility. Uh, and, and frankly, I just don't want to own a lot of stuff anymore. And I think a lot of my viewers uh, are in the same category. And then the other thing is just, you know, having a grateful heart. If we don't have a grateful heart, no matter how much we have, it'll never be enough. So just realizing how fortunate we are, how much stuff that we do have, and you know, trying to keep up with the Joneses, that, that's just an exercise in futility, right? Um, what do we care what they have, right? What we, what we care is, you know, what's important in our life. And when you really break it down, there's, you know, there's a handful of things that are important in, in everybody's lives and just focusing on what that is for you. So again, the first thing to do is, is to spend less. And of course, the other thing is to earn more. I think it's a lot more fun to earn more. It does take time. It does take effort, right? You've got to level up your skills. Um, I've shared in the past some different skills that I think, um, even in your, your mid forties, your fifties, your sixties, are, these skills are still on the plate for all of us. The first one you're going to say, oh, come on, Asul, really? Uh, going to a coding boot camp. Uh, I did that when I was 50 years old just because I wanted to learn how to code. And, you know, I built some pretty good uh, applications. And if I wanted to, uh, I think I could have got a job. So uh, I got pretty good at that over a two and a half year period. Uh, so that's, that's the first one. Uh, another one is, you know, social media marketing. And yes, that's a young person's game. Yes, social media, you know, young people grew up on it, right? But, you know, a lot of business owners want to be able to promote their companies on social media. Um, and they're not, you know, the business, a lot of the business owners aren't kids. They're people our age. So I think you have an advantage if, if you take a course and you don't have to spend thousands of dollars on courses. I'm a big fan of information is free teaching me to transform is what I pay for. Teaching me to execute is what I pay for. So, you know, read books on the subject. There's a website called uh, Udemy, U-D-E-M-Y, Udemy.com. Think about going there. You can usually pick up a course for under $20. That's gonna give you a really solid foundation, actually. So podcasts, books, YouTube videos like this, uh, then inexpensive courses. And then if you're like, okay, I want to jump in. I want to, I want to learn social media. I, I, I want to fine tune my writing skills so I can help companies uh, promote their products and services better. I want to get better at sales so I can earn more commissions. That's when you, that's when you, you bite the bullet and you say, okay, uh, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna actually spend the big dollars, maybe a thousand dollars, maybe a couple thousand dollars to take a really good course to learn any, to transform yourself into that version of what you want to get better at. Uh, and if you wanna get better at understanding retirement and, and taking full advantage of your, the youth of your senior years, I encourage you to watch these two videos here. 
The first one is the average income for retirees up here. And the second one is five reasons to retire as soon as you can. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.